the exponential growth of this movie's insanity is terrifying. <laughs> and continues. And it will keep pace, to be clear. Yep. Continues. For another 68 minutes, yes. If the characters in this movie had crawled through my screen, <laughs> right, <laughs> unfolded their skin, and Cthulhu had done like a small quiz on <laughs> Friends Season 6, it would not be as crazy. <laughs> nope. It's what actually happens in this fucking film. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because this is the internet and that's how it works now. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. No idea, Noah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> to answer your question. Uh, so you're gonna, that answers a lot of the questions I have in the notes. I got, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Christmas tacular. I, there's nothing <laughs> tacular going on here today. Christmas. So, <laughs> so Heath, I feel like you've already answered this question, but I have to ask it anyway. Tell us what will we be I have breaking? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what we're going to be breaking down today. It's, it's called a Karate Christmas Miracle. I know that. That we know. And that is all I know. <laughs> it, 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 the, it entirely doesn't involve those words. No, nope. it's I mean, a like there's an indefinite article that could apply to some of the stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there's barely any karate. Christmas nope. is hardly featured. It's certainly not a miracle. Nope. No, well, a karate Christmas miracle is what we watched, though. Yeah, it's like he's testifying at a Senate hearing. I don't recall <laughs> karate <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just muting my mic and conferring with my attorney. <laughs> And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love leaving passive aggressive post-it notes for your wife, <laughs> but they don't dishonor the victims <laughs> of a mass shooting enough, yes. you will love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So this is a film from the moldy bucket of monkey shit that is Ken Del Vecchio's mind. He, we, we've, we've done his movies before. He was the, creative mind behind The Life Zone and Cries of the Unborn, two films about how morally ambiguous it is when you kidnap women and force them to birth children against their will. You decide. Yeah, right. Well, so, choice. And here's the thing, right? So The Cries of the Unborn was the sequel. It was So The Life Zone was all about them kidnapping these women and forcing them to bear children. And then The Cries of the Unborn was this weird sequel thing where a jury was watching that movie and trying to decide who the bad guy was, right? It was Ken Del Vecchio. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, imagine how fucking weird it would have been to watch The Cries of the Unborn if we hadn't watched The Life Zone first. Sure. Right? That's what we did here. Oh! This movie is... This, I'm going to go ahead and cue the listeners in on this in advance and because we didn't know and any of this going through it. But this is a sequel to a pro-gun movie that Ken Del Vecchio made in the wake of the Aurora Theater shooting about a guy who dressed as a clown and shot up a theater called the Aurora Palace that was also no, owned by a lady named Aurora Palace. It's all very confusing, but... That's and, and then his character in that movie dies. This is him bringing that character back to life in a mostly unrelated karate movie. Wait, what's what's the name of that movie? It's either Joker's Wild or Joker's <laughs> Poltergeist. That's a bad start. What's okay. the title of the movie? Well, it's either <laughs> right. one yes, of the exactly. following. It <laughs> depends on what free platform <laughs> you're watching it on. Yep. Yeah, unless you're talking about some like early Jackie Chan film, something from some <laughs> foreign market that got reintroduced several times. No, it's just he couldn't decide what the, he had a better idea for the name of the movie at some point and changed it. So, Noah, just to be clear, the reason why we watched, I'm going to go ahead and say indiscernible nonsense. <laughs> yes. For an hour and 31 minutes is because we were not well versed enough in the Vecchio verse. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, and here's the thing. So Ken Del Vecchio has a habit of getting minor celebrities, like whatever the next step up is from cameo, he uses that, <laughs> right? And and in his movie, Joker's Wild Poltergeist or whatever, he had Eric Roberts and Martin Cove, Kreese from the Karate Kid movies oh. and the Cobra Kai. And so he just reused footage from those guys in this movie so that this movie also had Eric Roberts and Martin Cove in <laughs> it. Okay. <No>. Okay. <sighs> Yes, I just, I really just untied the knot for you guys, did I not? Here's what's weird. Most people, upon hearing they were unversed in the Vecchio verse, would be like, oh, that's nice for me in yeah. my life. <laughs> I am disappointed. I'm like, oh, man, this is why I wanted to do uh, the Vecchio verse in order, yeah. man. This is <laughs> in shame. order, they released them not in chronological order of the stories, guys. Come okay. on. Okay. Well, I'm not watching a wrestling Christmas musical until I'm sure I'm caught up on the full Vecchio verse. Amen. Now. Amen, brother. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst film festival appearance. Wait, what? Which this movie has. It appeared on opening night at the Hoboken International Film Festival. What? Mm -hmm. Which was founded and chaired by Ken Del Vecchio. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's rough. Yep. So I checked out their Facebook page and a um, couple things about the Hoboken International Film Festival. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First of all, according to Fox, it's one of the 10 biggest film festivals in the world. What? Okay. <laughs> That's not true at all. No. I looked up that exactly. And not once did this appear on any list, <laughs> even the ones that were way larger than 10. No, no. incorrect. But, you know, Fox said it. So I, sure, know, I guess that tracks. And this is for also from their Facebook page. It says <laughs> the best submissions will be rewarded with cash prizes in nearly 10 categories. What? <laughs> nearly <laughs> 10. <laughs> How? How near? It doesn't say. He's hedging his bets on how many categories there's going to be. The, yep, that's correct. <laughs> if you guys, could we oh. get on TikTok and fake a pro-life film? Do you think we could win the Hoboken International Film Festival? I think we could take second place. If it still exists, yes. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Ken's going to take second. If first. there's as many as two categories. <laughs> right. <laughs> One is nearly ten. <laughs> okay so i was gonna go with best worst newspaper clippings so central to this film is that this kid is collecting newspaper clippings about his dad who was at the theater shooting that happened in the previous movie right and instead it is not hard to fake newspaper clippings and barring that hey when we're only seeing them from a distance you could use real just clippings from a newspaper but no they have printed out kind of newsy looking shit on eight and a half by 11 pieces of fucking printer paper and yep. use those instead. And he just kind of like lazily crumpled it a little bit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. See newspaper mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. It's amazing. And see, I was going to go with a Vecchio verse special best worst prominently displayed legal books. Yeah. So for those not familiar with the Vecchio verse of the two things Ken Del Vecchio is famous for one being disbarred as a municipal judge for advertising his movies to people as they were paying their parking tickets. Yes. But two <laughs> is he is somehow tangentially related to two very poor selling legal books. And those books will appear in every fucking shot in this movie <laughs> like a My Pillow sponsorship. It's bizarre. <laughs> People are drinking out of them like Coke. It makes no sense. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We may have actually bitten off more than we can chew with this one. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the disbarment level insanity that is a karate Christmas miracle. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ooh. Hey, Eli, what you doing, man? Did you, did you try to climb a stair again? Or? No, no, no. It's nothing like that. It's just, you know. Made it past the holidays, and that was uh, that was a lot. You know, that was it was a lot. Well, it seems like you could really use somebody to talk to. No, 
no, I, I need less people talking. Like so much less talking. No, no, not like that. I, I mean, a licensed professional therapist from BetterHelp. Wait. I can talk to a therapist about stuff like holiday stress and family drama. You sure can. And with BetterHelp, you can do it all securely online. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. That does sound good. But what if I don't like the therapist they assign me? Am I stuck with them like my cousin Rick's girlfriend who showed up without telling anybody? Not at all. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. All right, I'm in. Where do I sign up? Just visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Plus, as a special offer for God Awful Movies listeners, get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. All right. Hey, any chance BetterHelp could get my cousin Rick not to bring his girlfriend next year? I don't. I don't think so. She has a tattoo of her kid on her face. I, I know, man. I saw. We we all saw. Yeah. So what did the Holmes say? Well, they said he's too young. They can't admit him. Ah, damn it. Ladies and gentlemen, Renaissance man, come to Vecchio. I said Renaissance man, can to oh. Vecchio. Yeah. Hooray. Okay. I applaud you now. Hey, Ken, uh, we want to talk to you. Hey, uh, bada bing. I want to talk to you. I got I got a new movie. It's it's a movie. It's called A Karate Christmas Miracle. No. Okay, that but great, but but we need to talk to you about these legal charges. So yeah. anyway, it started my son and my wife, and it's all about how if I was dead, you would remember all the good stuff I did. Like all the homeless people I helped and how good at karate Christmas miracles I was. What? And gazebo. Sorry, and gazebo, Just is that what you said? let it, let it, let, Ken, Ken, if you want to talk to your wife, I think it's probably and, better. And I died in 9-11. Nope. What? No, you did not. The Aurora shooting. I died in the Aurora nope. shooting, but only because I didn't get a chance to do my karate. Okay. Christmas Just, miracle. just going right past that. Are you holding... An empty bottle of witch hazel. Ken, yeah. right Ken, do you, do you really want to make a movie about how much everybody would appreciate you if you had died in the Aurora mass shooting, or are you just trying to get around speaking to your wife? Movie. All right, man, we'll make the movie. I think he drank a bottle of witch hazel again. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up firmly inside the public domain, get Carol of the Bells rendered as boringly as you can possibly do that beautiful piece of music. Oh, and we're listening to Ken Del Vecchio try to find the right volume for the movie. <laughs> right? Park here the bell. No, hurry the bell. You can feel his fingers on the knob as you make your way into these credits. So, yeah, so so we head inside a house where we meet Abby. She's setting the table and she almost puts out too many plates. But then she remembers that her husband is dead. Yeah. <laughs> From a sequel. <laughs> a year ago. Prequel. We're going to find out later that it was been a yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. And I know some people watch these movies along with us. If you don't have the time to watch these movies along with us, it's on YouTube. It's on Tubi and stuff like that. But you can just look at the one quarter full salad bowl <laughs> that they put out for this opening <laughs> shot. Just really just pause it and look at that for like 10, 15 seconds. You've gotten the full scope of this film. It's a very small salad. I'm not wasting the whole goddamn bag of salad for a prop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she cut up like. A sixteenth of an onion for this. That's yeah. weird. You have fifteen sixteenths of an onion in your fridge now? So yeah, so she sets out the small salad they're having for dinner. She calls for her son Jesse, but he doesn't come. So she goes upstairs to get him. And he is it's just gonna get weirder from here, so just buckle in now, folks. He is reciting trivia to his dad's headshot while wearing a karate uniform. That's not weird. I've been there. This is how you, <laughs> you make your dead dad proud with trivia. You wear a gi to make, take it seriously. I, it's not. I feel like that was judging. Everyone mourns in their own way. <laughs> okay. All right. No, fair. Fair. 
Now, to be granted, Heath is 40, so it's a little bit more upsetting than this child. But, Better at him yeah. than in karate. So well, right, probably. It's, it's well, he's him. only a yellow belt at this point. Heath, I wouldn't just say that, because Ken Del Vecchio will drive to your house with his son and be like, fight my <laughs> child. I will happily win or lose a fight to Ken Del Vecchio and his child. Uh, he's like, I will happily fight this guy's kid. <laughs> now now we're gonna this is how we make it in the newspaper okay we had that lovely Washington Post thing and now it's gonna be like podcaster loses karate fight question mark so <laughs> it'll be in a local Jersey paper where like that happens three other times that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. fair that's good so okay they interject mom in the weirdest fucking way so the kid is naming the presidents backwards right and he said he gets to Nixon and mom cuts in and goes Richard Nixon was impeached. Nope, was not impeached. I wrote that down, and then the kid was like, Nixon wasn't impeached. And I was like, nice. Pedantic just like me. Good right. job, movie. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, the kid's like, fuck up, mom. I'm talking to dead dad's headshot, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a normal thing you do. And I wrote in my notes at this point, you can take him, mom. He's only a yellow belt. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so he explains to his mom that he's got this list of trivia tasks that includes memorizing the last 10 presidents and getting a black belt before Christmas Day. And if he completes all of them, then his dead dad will come back to life on Christmas Day. Yep. That is the plot of the movie. He's going to resurrect or find his missing dad who's probably dead. Maybe we didn't know because we didn't watch. the prequel. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. And here's how much worse it is. He's already done all the tasks except for the karate at the start of the movie. Right. <laughs> yeah, they could have. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We get him crossing I mean, nine off the list. I of assume ten. these other tasks took place in Joker's Wild. But <laughs> if you're coming in cold like we were, it's really weird to start the list on number 10. Oh, it's, speaking of coming cold, I have to point this out. Mom's like, come on, dinner's going to get cold. She's like, dinner's always cold. You're a terrible cook. I'm like, it's salad. It's salad. <laughs> we saw it. <laughs> How fucking... I'm going to throw this in the microwave. This is ridiculous. <laughs> you never had a New Jersey hot salad? Ooh. <laughs> Just Ooh. blowing the steam off of it. A <laughs> little mozzarella. Oh, hot lettuce. By the way, this character's name is Jesse yes. Genesis. Yes. And his dad is Bob Genesis. <laughs> yep. Bob and Abby Genesis. Yeah. Jesus. So, okay. So now we head over to this very sad karate studio where they definitely film porn at night. Here's what's upsetting about reviewing Ken Del Vecchio's movies now that I live in New Jersey. <laughs> Everything in this movie is a 20 minute drive from my house. <laughs> Right. They show the bar's name a bunch of times. So I Googled that and I was like, I wonder if there's a karate studio. Yup. Karate <laughs> studio. I could, I could do a walking tour of a karate Christmas miracle. I had the exact <laughs> same Google experience as Eli. <laughs> so. And I actually have a scavenger hunt plan for us. Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. I, I can't wait till the next time we go to visit Eli. And at the end, you find Ken Del Vecchio and you have to have a conversation with him. It's a punishment. And a karate fight with his son. And you, yeah, fight exactly. his son. And you yeah. karate fight his son. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. But so, okay, we're at the karate studio. Jesse Genesis is, is doing his little karate fight or whatever to move up a belt. Mom's there, but she's on the phone hard at work at her marketing job. What? Mm hmm. Is marketing, according to the movie, such a great what question? What do they think that is? There's going to be a, a large emphasis put on applesauce. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and gravy. I would love to hear Ken Del Vecchio's answer to that question. What is marketing in 25 words or less, Ken? Great question. She seems to be a marketer who represents the entire, like, applesauce consortium right the, the country, concept of applesauce or the, yeah. the, the the gravy council like yeah and, I, <laughs> well right because it's always a different thing she's talking about candy at this point and i honestly started feeling like at a certain point that ken del vecchio thinks marketing is like you know applesauce pays you money and then you call each individual person and give them the hard sell on apples right you pitch them <laughs> applesauce because that's what she's always doing on the phone Hello, Mots. Oh, no, you're already I, apples. I don't understand my job, actually. Who <laughs> buys it? And even if Ken's excuse would be like, well, obviously, I couldn't use a branded thing for the movie. He knows that marketing isn't like pitching 
the thing. Like, you don't look at a Coke commercial and Coke is like soda. Am I right? <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Chocolate carbonated water, the best. <laughs> so, yeah, but so he explains once more that he has to earn his black belt before Christmas, which is five days away. He's a yellow belt at the time in order to resurrect that. And look, I'm no karate master. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm tired of having to clarify that on the air, by the way. Yeah. Are you not a black belt? Well, no, I'm a Taekwondo. Oh, of course. Yeah. And I'm a second degree black belt. Heath. Keep up. Also, it's pronounced karate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely how Ken Del Vecchio pronounces yes. it for sure. I don't think what this child is doing is karate. Is there rolling around on the ground in karate? I I don't man. Look, you're. Not, I mean, if you fall, that, that <laughs> I feel like you that have would to. happen to me. They're doing they're doing the squeezy UFC stuff. I think they're that's doing not yeah, karate. Jiu -jitsu Jiu -jitsu type and stuff. Yeah, they're yeah, grappling. Yeah, that's, that's, I feel like that's not it, karate. I don't really know what the where the dividing line is where it be, goes from karate to jujitsu. I'm. Like we we would really have to bring in Ken Del Vecchio and his kid for that one. I believe karate is the way of the open fist. <laughs> <laughs> so Ken, if you're listening, and we know you are, get get back to us. Let us know where the karate begins and ends in this film. All right. So then we cut from there to scenes from the last film. Again, we did not know that. So all we get is just weird random shots of Eric Roberts delivering a like generic Batman villain speech. Okay. But it's very <laughs> clearly Ken Del Vecchio's inner monologue. Yes. Which is the most terrifying thing about the movie, right? It, it's always like, they laughed at me when I got fired from my job as a municipal judge, but I'm allowed <laughs> to buy a gun. I can buy as many guns as I want. I'm Ken Del Vecchio. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, we, we cut to this so violently that I assume this is what like he had taped this movie over. Right? <laughs> there is no transitional material. It's just suddenly Eric Roberts is like, and when I was a kid and I peed myself, I just, a lot of people have that problem up until their early teens. I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that that's not really something that you should make fun of people for. Wow. Okay. Ken Delvecchio did a home video with Eric Roberts. They forgot about it and they've put it on this movie. That, yeah. <laughs> we had no idea what was happening. It, there's like, it's like a scenario from Saw. So Eric Roberts is some kind of bad guy. Yeah. Is he supposed to be the evil clown guy at the Aurora shooting? Is yes. that who he is? Yes. Uh huh. Uh... Okay. So the movie still doesn't make any sense. Yeah. No, that makes no, a, uh -uh. a little bit more sense right now. For those of you who want to relive our lived experience, however, this gets set up throughout the movie and never pays off. So our notes are just, they're just fucking like tied together string and push pins desperately <laughs> trying to follow. Well, right, because it's presented like the thing that's going to be explained in the third act. Right. Yeah. yeah. I just did a control F for what? 67. <laughs> 67 what? Oh, you're, you're going to get a lot more of those if you include W-U-T. I wrote that yeah. one a lot. <laughs> So, yeah, so and, and then we get some like uber lazy exposition in the form of correct me if I'm wrong, handing over the parts of the script that explain this aspect of the story. Yep. Right. They're supposed to be headlines. <laughs> but again, they're just printed on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Sure are. Sure are. <laughs> yeah. But what we learned from them is that a mysterious clown shot up a theater and that's where dad disappeared. And Jesse was dreaming what we just saw. Yes. Right. It was a nightmare because we cut from there to him waking up and yelling for his mom. Okay. I, I wrote in my notes, I had a terrible nightmare that Eric Roberts had to do whatever movie he was offered. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Yeah, yeah. No, and then, and by the way, clearly mom stopped to do her hair and makeup before responding to her screaming child. So, yeah. And he explains the dream in vivid detail. Like we didn't just fucking watch it. Yeah. To which mom says, and I quote, Jesse, why did you dream of that? Are you a fucking <laughs> prophet? You have to, t you, know, you know what? Never mind. This, <laughs> your child is, your dad didn't get killed by Eric Roberts in a saw scenario. <laughs> I don't know why I would say that. Anyway, <laughs> my husband's headshot is very attractive. I have it right here on the desk. Oh, Check God. it out. Let's make sure we look at that every 11 seconds in this film. Second only to the legal book. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so but she tucks the kid back in, puts him back to bed, and then she goes to check out his resurrect dad checklist. This is where she finds his drawer full of eight and a half by 11 inch news clippings. Yep. Yes, it is. 
It's a zine. The town uses more of a zine than a newspaper. So, and it, okay, this is again where knowing there was a prequel would have helped. In my head, it was like this woman sees these newspaper clippings and is like, hold on. Did my husband get kidnapped by a clown during a mass shooting? Probably yes. And that's like what she's learned here. Yeah. But that's literally what happened is what we're saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, I just want to give a big shout out to Past Heath for writing, this is going to get solved with karate. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. also hope Because I was so excited at this point. <laughs> yeah. Early in the movie, I'm like, oh my God. Literally, Eric Roberts, the evil clown, did something like stole this kid's dad during a mass shooting. Karate will solve this. I'm so goddamn happy. Yeah. No, right. No, nope. the, the movie certainly sets it up like this kid's going to have to kick Eric Roberts ass with his ninja skills. But no, the never. No, anything like that. But a drunk art teacher will double get, guess herself. So, you know, it all works. Out. Yeah. OK, so then we cut to. OK, so then Ken Del Vecchio justifies the drone he bought so that we can do a, an establishing shot of the college where apparently Ken Del Vecchio's wife works. Oh, uh, yeah. Caldwell University. It's a Catholic missionary. Type okay, so college, college is in air quotes there. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and this is where we're going to meet a character that will eventually be named Elizabeth. Oh, I have her down as Professor Lady the whole. Yeah, movie. right. Oh, right. did she get a name? Yeah, in the third act. Or actually late in the second act. Cool. But yeah, so she is a legal professor and she is teaching a <laughs> See, this guy's a fucking lawyer. We know he's actually he was been a judge, the, right? He was a judge. He's still he a lawyer. Judged, <laughs> he hit a gavel, and the legal consequences of what came out of his mouth happened. Yes, presumably more than once. So yeah, so the teacher lady is doing the darkest possible timeline version of a Thomas takes the bar question here, <laughs> right? She's teaching her little class, and she's killing the crowd work. By the way, oh, they're eating out of her hands. Yeah, both of the students are loving this. Yeah. <laughs> so this is supposed to be comedy, right? Yep. Is it? It is unbearable. I'm trying to think <laughs> of a way to communicate what it's. It is church improv team quits on the spot. So the coach who used the slur <laughs> that caused the team to quit riffs her way for 90 minutes Oh, uh, improvises is, a Jordan Peterson lecture on the yeah, spot. Yeah, this is the yeah, and the audience is doing the exact same chuckle, chuckle, cut, chuckle, chuckle, cut after every line. It's getting increasingly comical as we go. He couldn't yeah. get a second chuckle cut. Nope. No, no. <laughs> it's the same one. The same tree gets passed by the people chuckling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she's trying to tell this hypothetical bar question kind of type thing. And she says she's doing it Christmas themed. So she says, all right, so y'all are, I'm, I'm Santa and y'all are like little reindeer. But this is what she literally says, but without the horns, because they remind me of that Satan fella and I don't like him. Cool, cool, what? cool, cool. I just <laughs> love it. I So reindeers don't have horns, first of all. That's just one of the many things that are bizarre about that statement. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. But she goes through this incredibly long bit about how Santa gets drunk and he's in a bar fight. I'm making it sound funny. Trust me, it's not. Yeah. Right. Prancers glassing people left and right. <laughs> <laughs> There's surfers and greasers and Santa breaks a chair off in someone's ass. <laughs> right. So are you describing SantaCon? Because that's like a real yeah, thing. Right. Yeah, right. Exactly. I've seen personally. In New York City. Its origins are in New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is the seed from whence it grows. We found it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but seriously, this is her Thomas takes the bar exam question. Like Santa gets in a brawl at this bar, him and the reindeer, and Santa murders a greaser right before the greaser was going to kill Rudolph the reindeer with a whiskey bottle. Mm-hmm. And the question is, is that justified murder or is that aggravated assault or simple assault or whatever? Well, yeah, right. And as she's asking the question, Jesse, the karate kid, shows up in the back of the room and he goes, a duck, right? <laughs> they have this weird fucking moment where like he is the only one in the law class that knows the correct answer, which is that Santa, like Richard Nixon, did nothing wrong. <laughs> okay. Ken Del Vecchio was a real judge. I know. Was a I don't judge. Think 
I don't think you're allowed to kill a human being to save a reindeer no matter what. <laughs> no. Legally. No. What are you talking about? Also, there will never be a reason for any of this to have happened. Like, none of this comes back in the, the kid is not even there in the next scene. Right? He's not involved in this in any fucking way. Okay. So we cut from there to this law professor, Lady Elizabeth, is now having a meeting with Jesse's mom, Abby. All right. Apparently, this meeting was set up by some independent third party such that the law professor has no idea what it's about or or something. <laughs> They're both confused why they're in the scene. You can watch them trying to work out as actors why this scene is happening. They both walk in holding like ransom notes with magazine letters on it. All right. I was told to meet you here. <laughs> so was I. So, <laughs> All right. Okay. Should we talk about something? So and what's supposed to be happening here is Elizabeth is trying to move Abby along and get her the hell out of here. She doesn't want to be part of this meeting. Right. So she's about to give her the. I really think you should leave speech that ends with extending your hand to shake, but she extends her hand before she starts doing the speech. Yep. So she just stands there and does the whole you should leave speech with her hands sticking out. That is eight minutes of the movie. It, yep. it was rough. She gets tired. You watch her hand yes. drop a little and she's like, nope, nope, too obvious, too obvious. <laughs> and then Abby doesn't <laughs> shake her hand and she just uses it to prop herself up on the desk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she fixes the hair on the desk. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, but mom isn't buying this please leave bullshit. So she explains to Elizabeth, the law professor, that when she was a girl of 16, she went to a psychic fair. I wrote my notes. The exponential growth of this movie's insanity is terrifying. <laughs> and continues. And it will keep pace, to be clear. Yep. Continues. For another 68 minutes, yes. Exponential. Noah said exponential, but yep. literally that's true, I would say. <laughs> yeah. It's not hyperbolic. If the characters in this movie had crawled through my screen, <laughs> right, unfolded their skin, and Cthulhu had done like a small quiz on Friends Season 6, it would not be as crazy nope. as what actually happens in this fucking film. <laughs> so, yeah, so she tells her she went to a psychic fair when she was 16, and the psychic told her that someday her husband would go on a journey. That's it. And just as you're like, wow, even in the movie, the psychics are terrible. The mom, Abby, says to Elizabeth, she says, that psychic was you. Yep. And this is where Elizabeth explains she didn't like being a psychic because her psychic powers were icky. She was always seeing dead bodies and stuff. Yeah. So actually, I've I've transcribed the line where she explains that. So oh, just please. so that you guys understand what kind of shit we're working our way through here. Here is Elizabeth's line. And I quote, I used to help the police. They wanted me to help them find missing people. And you know what I found? I found a bunch of dead bodies. It's all I could see. And I don't want to see a bunch of dead bodies. Okay. You have no idea what it's like to see dead bodies. And erg, it's just creepy. Creeped me out so much that I didn't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I had to quit being a psychic because I was too good. My psychic <laughs> powers were too good. I got complaints. You know, now that I hear you say it, it reminds me of Kraken testimony. So I am sort of oh, coming yeah. into my own. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They got a lot of lawyers like this, but all the lines are delivered like that. It's just this random, weird, repetitive nonsense. It's like fucking automatic writing acted out. It is as though, you know how Christopher Guest gives them like one sentence for their characters and then says, this is what needs to happen in this scene. <laughs> it's like, that's what Ken Del Vecchio did with these actors. Absolutely. Except he like got them from a nursing homes, dementia ward. <laughs> and one word was karate for the yeah, whole movie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> karate. One of them got karate. One of them got Christmas. And one of them got miracle. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them got a, <laughs> So, okay, yeah, so, but she's like, but you're a psychic. You have to help me figure out what happened to my husband. Here's his pocket knife. See if you can get any psychic sniff off of this, right? So Elizabeth picks up the knife and she just yells the word karate. 
Yep. <laughs> like like parkour, you know, it's just yep. no, like that's a quote again. It was like, yeah, so he got kidnapped, then karate. And I was just like, what the <laughs> fuck is that? Did they hear it? <laughs> she says, well, my son is trying to get his black belt by Christmas to bring his dad back. And the psychic is like, yeah, I know. I get it. That makes sense. Sure. sure, that might happen. <laughs> this movie's written by a gibbering idiot, so really <laughs> anything could happen. But seriously, it's a psychic. So she's like, oh, you, if your son gets a black belt, dad will get rescued from the uh, the kidnapper. Yeah, um, maybe. Maybe that'll happen. <laughs> I'm a psychic. Yeah, right. That is too good. I haven't seen the rest of the script. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so, okay, now we're we're back home. Jesse and Mom are sitting down to some pizza. Jesse presents her with a birdhouse that she has to paint. It's on his insanity list, you see. Yeah. Also, they keep their canned goods in the living room, which is the most scary thing about this scene. <laughs> in one of those restaurant racks for dry storage, very clearly. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Very clearly, Ken Del Vecchio at some point, like, hit a sale on green beans and came home with 144 <laughs> cans. And his wife was like, Kenny, where are we going to put those? And he was like, right here in the living I room. I also bought a dry storage yeah, bag right, for right, an right. entire room full Restaurant of cans. Restaurant was going out of business, and these things are they're sturdy. We can offer them to people as they store their shoes underneath it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Would you care for some green beans, Eric Roberts? Yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of which, we, we cut to another <laughs> Eric Roberts nightmare where he's explaining how he's going to give people nightmares. Oh, God. Sorry. Just a complete tangent. But it just occurred to me that uh, another nightmare at Ken Del Vecchio's house in real reality, there are dinner parties that have Eric Roberts, Robert Loja, and we're about to find Martin Cove in this movie, too. Ken Del Vecchio is friends with all those people. Martin Cove is the the Cobra Kai guy. He's John Kreese yep. from the Cobra Kai dojo. I don't think he's like, cause, cause like when these guys appear in his movies, they're always like sitting behind a desk with none of the other characters in the movie using like a type of camera that the rest of the movie doesn't <laughs> use and shit like that. So like, I don't think he's ever actually met. Like I, there, there's something that's one step up from cameo and that's what he's doing. Do you think Ken Del Vecchio got those three people off of weird charges in New Jersey? <laughs> yeah. All right, like, all right. I feel like we Eric Roberts, Robert Loja, and ticket. Martin Cove <laughs> did some weird evil shit, all three of them separately in Jersey. Those three men screamed DUI on the New Jersey highway. Yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. And yelled at the cops about who started the wars. Yeah. yeah something <laughs> there like you go. It's all coming together. See, we didn't think this movie made sense, but we're solving a mystery anyway. Right. <laughs> So, okay, so the, the kid wakes up from his nightmare and they, they run the kid rolling around yelling for his mom way too long on this bit. Yep. But he wakes up and he says, I saw a dad in my dreams. He was making some convoluted argument about the constitutionality of guns <laughs> at a theater. Again, we're going to find this out later on Christmas Day where there was a mass shooting, which you got to admit is pretty funny, right? When you show up to be like, oh, no, let me tell you the thing about guns. Paca, paca, paca. Okay. All right. You got me. <laughs> so, you got yeah. me. That is kind of funny. We are hard selling Joker's Wild. Here. <laughs> yeah. That episode is going to come up, I'm sure. So, yeah. So mom's like, honey, your dad's not going to come back to life. That would be a terrible plot for a movie. And to which Jesse's like, well, then how do you explain my dreams? That's his real question. Yep. And his mom is like, you know what? You got me. Yeah, you got me. exactly. Right. <laughs> By the way, I think we've pointed this out already. This is Ken Del Vecchio's actual son, the giant baby of Del Vecchio fame. Oh, that's right. This is the this child is the giant baby. You're right. Oh, wow. Yeah. He's had quite a cinematic <laughs> career here on God Off Set. Poor bastard. Which performance do you think was more pivotal? <laughs> Karate Christmas musical or Giant Baby in the Life Zone? I think Giant Baby in the Life Zone, obviously. But yeah. yeah. All right. So then we cut to mom on the phone having a weird, incredibly long, bafflingly incorrect conversation about gravy. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. I'm a vegan, so it's been a while, but I was like, I don't think Ken Del Vecchio has seen people food in a couple of decades <laughs> because it's definitely alien in its first body trying to describe gravy. There's so much weird. She's talking about how you 
where you put gravy and where you don't. Apparently, she's supposed to be like talking to Big Gravy about their new ad campaign or something. Yeah. But yeah, she keeps saying she's like, oh, no, yeah, people put gravy on everything. Milkshakes, hamburgers, you know, name it. She says you could put gravy on chicken. Do you put gravy on chicken? I guess you could on maybe on fried chicken, like a chicken fried. Yeah, like a southern fried. Yeah, steak yeah, yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, I guess yeah, you could the, put that white gravy. Put gravy on that, sure. I guess you can put gravy on whatever you want. They have to let. You, <laughs> is my experience. With it. Actually, there are a number of things they won't. They do not have to let you put gravy on. As it Keith, we out. don't need to adjudicate this on the air. You and that Chuck E. Cheese are coming to a mutual settlement online. <laughs> Listen, I wanted a malted with au jus, so I asked for it, and I'm. They have it in the back. I know you have it, and and you have a French dip. That you have a malt. That rat put his hands on you first. That's so true. everything you did exactly that afterwards. Is is legal, True. much like Santa in the far place. <laughs> the way of the open yeah. fist. At this point, my notes are literally just, hey, guys, I think I might not speak English anymore. <laughs> yeah, but she wraps up her gravy conversation. This only exists in the script, by the way, because we have to establish that she's just always working, right? Yeah. That's how we do that. We do it like 11 times with her. So, but she wraps up that conversation and she's sitting around with the old neighbor who is now about to graduate from graduate school. N normally, we would just refer to that as the by the degree she was about to get, but fine. She's about to graduate from graduate school and is babysitting on holiday break. Imagine how bad the attempt for Ken Del Vecchio to write what graduating from graduate school is like had to go for them to settle on this as the line. <laughs> He must have gone to law school, right? Yes. Did he? I don't think it's possible. I think we're going to find somewhere in New Jersey law that like if you eat uh, the big pizza at Jimmy John's Jigglypuff <laughs> in Hoboken, passing the bar. you're a judge. <laughs> Him and Vinny Bag of Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so her and the fucking PhD babysitter or whatever gonna going to have this weird-ass conversation that includes the line, you know, ever since his dad meant missing, no second thing. <laughs> no what is this, god-awful movie? No We're not gonna take. <laughs> it's fucking Brando. <laughs> yeah, she's like, the, the babysitter's like, well, how is your son handling his, you know, the disappearance of his dad? And she's like, oh, he's doing great. He thinks that if he gets a black belt by Christmas, his dad will come back to life. Yep. And he has psychic dreams. Yes, right. Yeah. And this graduate student in child psychology is like, yeah, I've studied that. That's basic child psychology. Yeah. You think blah, you get a black belt. That's anti-kidnapping magic. Uh, kids do that all the time. Classic. And then th this child psychology graduate student says, oh, so, yeah, I mean, that's tough. What did your grief counselor say is, is a good idea for, you know, talking to your son about this? <laughs> and the mom is like, he said, Hat, cue card. <laughs> ah, fuck you, therapy's not real. And for the rest of the movie, I was like, oh, wow. This is like the literal worst. Mo this is such bad parenting. Terrible parenting. Yeah, and what's funny is the whole movie is kind of about the fact that she's a bad mom, but not for failing to get him proper like therapy or counseling at this point for constantly being on her gravy conversations for being gainfully employed by the gravy industry <laughs> exactly. yeah. failing to appreciate ken del vecchio but mostly that last one yeah well right and how awesome his karate skills were <laughs> and this scene literally ends in a line that is so fucking funny i and i know i say like oh i laugh i literally had to pause the movie to laugh at it they finish, they're like, oh, yeah, no, we didn't get him therapy. And then the final line of the scene before the cut is, <laughs> yes. does he have any dietary restrictions? Cut. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel like the audience, as well as us, are still kind of coming to grips with the knowledge that weird for Ken Del Vecchio is apparently a thing. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back in a flash with even more of a karate Christmas miracle. None of those things. Okay, now tell him to set the food down. Set the food down and step backwards with your hands over your mouth. Hey guys, what you, what you doing? Why, why are you pointing a sniper rifle at the pizza delivery guy? Uh, it's a little thing called Caution Noah. Maybe you've heard of it. Yeah, how else are we supposed to get food? And do not say vent-based heist, because we already had that argument many so, times. I, yeah. I mean, if you guys are looking for a safe way to have food and essentials delivered, why not just try Postmates? What's Postmates? 
With Postmates, I get all my favorite food from the local restaurants in my neighborhood delivered. No leaving the house, and even better, no getting in the car and finding a parking space. And Postmates isn't all just burritos and sushi. I can order things like toothpaste and phone chargers on demand, too. That's because places like Walgreens and 7-Eleven are also on Postmates. Wow, that sounds convenient and safe. It is. And my favorite part is that the app lets me know that my food or item has been delivered. Everything is right outside my door. It's so cool. It never gets old. Okay, so you're saying just no need for a sniper rifle at all? Just in in general, but yeah, specifically here. And for a limited time, Postmates has given our listeners a little something. New customers are going to get $20 off their first order of $30 or more when they use the code AWFUL. That's code AWFUL to get $20 off your first order of $30 or more. Just download the Postmates app or sign up online. It's super easy. Offer subject to change and taxes and fees apply. Offer valid for 30 days after you add the promo code to your account. All right, Noah, we're in. Thanks, Postmates. Postmates. Okay, so, so what do you say? You wanna you wanna let the pizza guy go? Make him do the macarena first, but then yes. Do the macarena. No, like he means it. Make him do it like he means it. Like you mean it. Come on, Greg. Hey, podcast listener. You know, if we've learned anything from the films of Ken Del Vecchio, it's that there needs to be a more robust vetting process for municipal judges. But if we learned anything else from the movies of Ken Del Vecchio, it's that movies are an excellent way to send passive aggressive messages to your spouse. So without further ado. This summer, an all new passive aggressive triple feature. Oh, hello, darling wife. I've made you a hot cup of coffee because I love you. Now, if you'll just wait the one second it takes me to put it down on the table in front of you. No, can't wait. I must have that coffee right now. Oh, no, you've spilled the coffee I was handing you, and now I've burned to death. The guy who burned to death because his wife wouldn't wait for him to just hand her the coffee. And don't miss. Well, that knife is uh, way sharper than you need one to just cut tomatoes. What's that? I couldn't hear you over the sound of me leaving the handle on this pot of boiling water turned towards the room instead of turning it sideways towards the counter. Oh, that'd be safer. I'm sorry, shouldn't you curl your fingers? Oh, God, you've slipped and cut off my head. The guy who was decapitated by his wife's failure to follow basic safety practices in the kitchen. And last but not least. Okay, did you guys do cricket sounds for me? Because I'm not married. What? No, no. We, would, we would never do that. You guys totally Dude. did the cricket sound. Nothing happened. He will die alone. What? Nothing. No, it's an air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> Delivery people. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up with a babysitter watching Jesse at karate practice. It's not karate again. They're just sort of rolling around on the ground. Yeah. But, and also... Ken Delvecchio's son, this actor, Mario Delvecchio, allegedly had a blue belt in karate or something in like in real life when this movie was made. A blue belt. I, I mean, yeah, right. You like you can get any belt you want whenever you yep, want. Yeah, you just <laughs> order it from Amazon. <laughs> like Eli, again, Eli has a black belt in something. second degree. Yeah, I say this later in my notes, but like, are you allowed to forbid your kid from doing a sport because it's douchey? <laughs> Because I am not, look, my parents did a great job of keeping a straight face while I was given a series of belts. I am not going to be able to do that. <laughs> my beautiful boy is not going to run up to me and be like, I'm a brown belt. And I'm not going to, I'm going to be like, oh, okay, you're a bro belt. <laughs> oh, no, I'm a brown belt because I'm wearing it. So <laughs> don't send your kid to fight class. That's yeah. just maybe a good idea to not. So, I don't know, I still haven't forgiven my mom for forbidding me from going to fight class, so. (laughs) Hey, you know who it's probably a better idea? That they never learned deadly martial arts. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that was certainly my mom's reasoning, Eli. But most children is the answer to that, I would say. Yeah, probably. (laughs) D&D Beyond would be dead right now, no illusions. It would be dead. All right, so meanwhile, mom is on the phone talking up applesauce, right? (sighs) Oh, I'm just still confused about what her job is. She says applesauce is the new jello. So now she's talking to people from both industries or one. I don't know. I don't know what marketing is. Yeah. I just really wanted to watch her try and make an applesauce mold. <laughs> and she turns the thing over and open. <laughs> oh, it's everywhere. Oh, it's uh, not the new jello. She says you can get applesauce with maple syrup. 
I don't think you can. Yeah, you you can. They have to. Let they you. have to let you. Yeah. <laughs> and Oju, savory sweet. But then she gets a call from her dead husband's phone. The extent to which this will not factor into the plot is staggering. Well, it's actually very important, Noah, because it's going to give Ken Del Vecchio a chance to brag about the three Wednesdays he volunteered at a local soup kitchen. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but then we, we transition from advancing the kidnapping murder plot to the college where Elizabeth teaches with cartoon dog is just settling in for some fishing music. <laughs> hey, you remember that Santa metaphor that went on for 17 minutes and uh -huh. ended in a wrong thing? Well, that was just too good for one. So that she's going to do a second one about the Grinch wanting to be a prison fuck buddy or something. <laughs> how, how can he turn himself in? Yep. Yeah. And this goes on for like, I, I'm going to say conservatively three minutes before she suddenly has a psychic vision about the knife. There's also a reverse shot here where we realize that there is literally only one girl in her class. Yeah. Now, this is not like the punchline to a joke. No. Nope. Right. Like she, she says, you know what, class? Uh, I, I'm going to I have just had a psychic vision about this knife. I'm going to need to move on and do some plot stuff. And we cut to the class shot and there's just one person there. There's they, they had maybe he thought that was just funny all on its own, even if there was no reason for that to be happening. But I think they just had the one student for that shot. And they were like, yeah, fuck it. That, that'll work. Yeah, very, very clearly in between the two shots between this and the other Christmas story, two people walked out and were like, oh, I'm sorry, you said you could get me out of those parking tickets, Mr. Del Vecchio, but I'm, I'm just going to pay him. I don't want to end up like Eric Roberts. <laughs> yeah, but she's had a psychic vision, so she can advance the plot now. Then we head over to a diner slash soup kitchen where mom is going to follow up on the phone call she just got. Yeah, and she's a giant asshole right away. Are they just trying to make her out to be terrible because she has a job? Is that what they're going for here? Yes. Because she shows up and she's like, oh, I'd like to eat at your... Oh, you're, this is a restaurant that's just giving out food to poor people. I'm not Gross. here to help. She's not the... <laughs> hey, let's fill some time with having this argument. If you show up looking for someone and they're like, oh, no, we're a soup kitchen right now. Here's a spoon. I'd be like, no, no, no. I'm here looking for someone. Yeah, right, right. Exactly. But the movie... Entering a soup kitchen doesn't contractually obligate you to volunteer. Right. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, though. Like, you do a ladle or two. I don't know. Just help <laughs> out. My new prank war is I'm just going to lure you into various volunteer buildings now. <laughs> well, but so, okay. And then the thing is, too, is that, that it's not like there's anything for her to do. They have two homeless people who apparently showed up straight from the fucking salon. <laughs> right. But then she turns to the guy behind the counter and the weirdest conversation in all of human history takes place. This sucks so much. This sucks so fucking much. She's like, are you Jay? And he's like, do I look like J? Because J is a letter of the alphabet or a bird. Am I a bird? This goes on for quite some time. <laughs> That's literally what he says. Yeah. Right. And again, Ken Del Vecchio is certain that this is some funny shit. And so he really leans into it. And it's just this weird, bizarre, guys, are you just making me watch this as a prank type moment? Yeah. Is this really something that Eli secretly wrote and forced upon me? Ken is my next door neighbor and I was like Ken, Ken, you gotta hear me out man we've done two of your movies you put a third one on Tubi I will give you $11 <laughs> yeah, no, as he's explaining that he's not a bird and therefore is not Jay and then he says, no, I'm kidding, Jay is actually in the back and he is my boss this is how I apparently respond when people come in looking for my boss I wrote, this movie is the weirdest fucking thing that's ever happened to me and I've done drugs Yep. <laughs> yep. Because what's happening there is a woman is like, yes, yeah, so my husband was possibly killed or kidnapped during the Aurora mass shooting. Just to be clear, I got a phone call from here from somebody named Jay. And this guy's like, fuck you. Jay's a bird. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. And then he's yep. like, ah, no, I was just pranking you, victim of the mass shooting. It's cool. So I just, I, I just do this really long form seven sentence bit with everyone who asks about someone who I can only assume gets asked about on a regular basis, seeing as he's the owner of the business. Yep. 
Yeah. Your husband's a crisis actor. Ah, no, I'm just <laughs> fucking with you. No, no, Jay's in the back. I know that Jay's a name, too. So, yeah, but so Jay comes out and explains that Bob, her husband, Bob Genesis, used to do free legal work for their <laughs> homeless shelter soup kitchen diner. Yep. And sometimes he would also serve the soup. He'd ladle soup sometimes, unlike you. Again, the only purpose of this is for Ken to be like, and don't forget I did that uh, free legal work for that soup kitchen. We got to work that into the movie. Yep. About how little you appreciate me. <laughs> so, My actual wife who stars in this actual movie. That's not his actual wife, is it? Didn't didn't you just print something out from legal zoom? Yeah, well, I'm a lawyer though, so but, that's but legal. I work. printed it, it legally. I I am forty eight percent sure this is his actual wife. I don't think that's his actual wife. I I honestly I'm basing that entirely on the fact that she's gorgeous, but <laughs> so. she's not an actor. So, <laughs> like somebody he knows. No, but nobody has. They're, so they're all his wife. <laughs> maybe maybe they're, they're, either, one of they're the, either his wife or they did something evil in jersey and he <laughs> put it under the rug somehow yeah. they're his wife they're his son they're a crazy person he got from a dementia ward they're Eric or Roberts. they committed a hate crime in jersey yeah, right. yeah. okay yeah. all right no that's fair that's fair i i'm guessing she committed a hate crime but I, i'm i could be proven wrong so just as she's like wow this doesn't really factor into the plot at all does it she gets a call from the psychic who has some information for her about the knife. Yeah. She doesn't actually have, but that's just what she says in that moment. Yeah, none of it. But before we can move on to that, we have to have this insane fucking moment where Jesse starts explaining what the various belt colors mean to his babysitter. This was pretty funny. This I left really fucking hard at this part. I did not. I stopped watching. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because he's like, white's a seed, the seed of the karate. Yellow is the sun. And I was like, nope, not yeah. listening to that. Nope, oh, okay. absolutely not. But it's so good. Listen, listen. Okay, so first of all, white is the seed, light come. Yep, sperm reference. Yellow is the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Orange, also sunlight. It's more, it's sunnier. <laughs> Green. All the colors are from the, the visible lights, but god damn it. Just go. It yeah, green so is also the sunlight. Yeah. Green, green, <laughs> where do you think the light's coming from? It's all light. No. It's all sun. Green is the growth of the seed. Blue is the blue sky. Sky, yeah. Mm -hmm. Also more sunlight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Purple. Sunset. S also sunlight. <laughs> more sun. And then the, the babysitter is like, oh, really? What comes after purple? And he's like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so we cut over to the psychic lady <laughs> who's ex explaining the rest of the belts. Yes. And guess what? The red belt? Sunlight. sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote in my notes, if the brown belt represents the sunlight, I'm out of here. But no. The and brown belt brown is just some other shit. Huh? Is the huh? ripening of the seed. And black is greatness and profound knowledge. Sunlight. <laughs> actually that's lack of sunlight if you could believe that yeah so at this point i just wrote in my notes the caterpillar from alice in wonderland would be confused by this woman's <laughs> character the caterpillar could have seen the prequel and would still be like what, what? 67 <laughs> yeah, exactly. times in their notes i don't think that i don't think anything about the prequel helps us but yeah so and this is all happening by the way at the karate dojo where the kid was earlier there's like a women's self-defense class going on in the background. And so Abby says, hey, why are you explaining to me the mystical meaning of karate belts at a women's self-defense class? She's like, oh, oh, it's because your husband used to teach at this class. He used to teach self-defense to women at this class. If Ken Del Vecchio taught a self-defense class for women, I am terrified. <laughs> Okay, well, you should be terrified because he certainly is talking about something he believes he's done in real life. That's the thing. Everything in this movie is a brag about Ken Del Vecchio. Yes. Which means some poor woman was like, oh, you know what? My neighborhood's a little bit sketchy at night. I think I'm going to go take a self-defense class. And the person who she listened to for a non-zero amount of seconds was Kenneth the Life Zone Del Vecchio. Multiple people walked into a dojo where Kenneth Del Vecchio was like holding a 
pocket knife being like karate karate doing a kata right and they joined his goddamn class which means that we could probably send anna and or lucinda undercover to get them like to beat the shit out of kento <laughs> right right like kento as he's, with a pocket knife. exactly <laughs> then they could say well he said come at him with the knife <laughs> <laughs> these are great ideas these are great ideas <laughs> But we have to do it in front of his son so he has something to avenge when he fights Heath. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By the way, this scene ends mm -hmm. with the psychic lady being like, by the way, Abby, one other thing you don't know about your amazing husband who ladles soup for poor people and helps soup kitchens with legal Zoom. <laughs> he was a black belt. You didn't know that. Like Eli Bosnick. <laughs> <laughs> <Same>. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not but quite the level of It's <laughs> such an obvious lie. Literally, zero wives are not aware about their husband's black belt that yes. they talk about every goddamn day <laughs> and wear over suits sometimes and display <laughs> on shit yeah. in the house. Well, and zero acquaintances of Ken Del Vecchio are not aware of his black belt. Too, he says I'm the sure. phrase black belt minimum five times a day in his entire adult life. No, I, if it's not on his business card, I will eat his business <laughs> card. <laughs> Black belt lawyer and municipal judge. Oh, I'm buying blackbeltlawyer.com and I'm directing it to Ken Del Vecchio. If he didn't wear a black belt over his judge robes, there's, there's no way that's not something that's happened in real life. You reality. know he was mad that people couldn't see it. He was like, stupid black belt. <laughs> way less effective. I'm going to get white robes. <laughs> he shows up in white robes wearing a black belt. Are you wearing a, a judge's gi? You right guys should go so see my see your black belt. <laughs> You guys yes. should go see my movie. <laughs> hey, I think the law is broken and maybe we shouldn't have them anymore. <laughs> is your gavel a ladle? Yeah, well, I actually work at a soup kitchen sometimes. <laughs> so You should see my movie, Eric Roberts. It's pretty odd. <laughs> I'm not a judge anymore. Damn it. <laughs> All right. So and and then we we cut over to another one of the Eric Roberts nightmares. This is where Martin Cove shows up mid nightmare. Yep. <laughs> John Kreese. This is amazing. Somehow he knows this guy. Yeah, or he hired him on fucking Cameo Plus or whatever. Yeah. Cobra Kai. So, but what's going on here, and I guess this is, I, I'm, I'm, I guess the plot of the other movie is that right before the big theater shooting, Martin Cove, the owner of this theater, gave the theater to his daughter, whose name is Aurora Palace. And then the theater got shot up right after that. So this is the scene from that movie where that happened. There's also a great thing that happens here because we cut between that and him putting on a mask, mm -hmm. right? Like he puts on a mask as part of this, but you can't hear him through the mask. So he's like, Aurora, I've always loved you. <laughs> 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 uh, usually they do this in voiceover. <laughs> Is the voiceover happening? Ken, you're going to ADR this, right? So it's not just me. Morgan? <laughs> I don't look like an <laughs> asshole here. Yeah, and then a series of fucking 80s adult leaders of kids superhero teams add some shit to the dream about how Jesse can't talk until Christmas now. Yeah. I feel like that was a punishment midway through the movie. Like, Jesse did two scenes and his dad was like, all right, you... You're not good enough for a Ken Del Vecchio movie. I'm going to need you to be silent for the rest of the movie. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So he wakes up and he explains this nightmare scene to his babysitter now. Yep. And then proceeds to do bad setups. Yep. In his bed. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. From this point on, every time we see him, he'll be doing his katas or he'll be doing cheap ass pushups where you really are just pushing your butt up. Yeah. Yeah. He does fuck a couch later. He does. He does count if your butt goes from low to high. That's a push up. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's measured. Everybody knows that. All right. So you are definitely qualified to fight this kid. I'm I passed the AAU physical fitness test. Yeah. There yes, you go. I did. <laughs> fuck Ronald Reagan. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So he's doing sit ups. He's got to get ripped. And then mom goes to see the psychic lady at a bar. Right. Right. And she's like lamenting. <laughs> just so that we could hear this more. She's like, man, my amazing husband, Ken Del Bob Genesis, uh, he's so great. I mean, ladling soup and again, black belt in karate. He has a black belt. How could I not know about that? And <laughs> the psychic lady's like, yeah, well, 
You'd probably, I don't know, you'd start talking about karate, you'd black out from hatred and boredom. That's just my guess. <laughs> probably. Anyway, based on every person I ever met who said black belt out loud. This is where the psychic gives his wife the talking to that he always wants to. It's like, yes. you don't know. You had your dream wedding to Ken Del Vecchio and your dream honeymoon to Ken Del Vecchio. Right. Well, yeah. So the whole point of this scene is the psychic chewing her out for being a spoiled little rich kid. You know, it's like, well, you know, you had all the advantages in the world, but you didn't earn your way up from the bottom like Ken Del Bob Genesis did. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Ken Del Vecchio never forgot his roots. He's so cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, you went to Yale and studied at the fancy gravy and applesauce department at Yale <laughs> University. <laughs> fancy. I wrote my notes at this point. I'm like, man, this is some we made a bot watch a thousand hours of Christmas movies type <laughs> scripting here. <laughs> yeah, Kendall Vecchio is very much a poor AI of a human being. <laughs> yeah, he's just missing the A and the I. Yeah. And then, okay. So then the psychic lady has a vision of Jesse's nightmares. Right. She says, I'm having the same visions as Jesse. And I'm like, are you watching the movie? How else would you know that? <laughs> but this is where she tells her that Bob was there talking about gun rights, something the movie forgot it already told us. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they got away from the mass shooting, and this is why I'm so excited to watch Joker's Wild, is I guess the night she took over the theater was a classic guys dressed like clowns and women dressed like other things party. <laughs> yep. That was a Christmas event at this theater. Just, you know, your normal Christmas theater. We showed a movie, had an NRA lecture and a evil clown party. Evil clown party, yeah. Turned into a mass shooting. Well, again, imagine watching the sequel to The Life Zone when they get to the part where, like, they have to explain the ending where they were all in hell, right? <laughs> Imagine that that's what we're going through right now, you know, is that whole like, oh, yeah, and then there was an evil clown party, right? Evil clown party. Yep, we knew that. We saw that coming. So, okay. So, meanwhile, since we just had a vision of the Eric Roberts nightmare monologue, we then switch over to Jesse having that nightmare again. Yep. <laughs> I'm having the same nightmares as a psychic is having yeah. visions. <laughs> I'm having a nightmare about a psychic having a vision about the nightmare I had earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but the babysitter wakes him up and, and she's like, what's wrong? And he hands her the, my best worst, the newspaper clippings again. Again. Because the code of silence. Right, yeah, he's not allowed to talk now. He so can't he has talk, to but he can communicate. He can like charades it, which right. is weird. That's a weird rule yeah. from your prophetic dream that you're following. <laughs> so, but then Abby gets home from the bar. She's all drunk as hell and she wants to have the, was I a bad wife? Do I even deserve Ken Del Vecchio conversation with the babysitter? Wow. Well, you're a bad mom. I mean, look, <laughs> they're, the only way to get someone to say, I never appreciated Ken Del Vecchio when I had him is to write it in the script and pay them. So, yeah, right, right, exactly. I get it. This is just the second level of like Finding someone with a relatively inexpensive customs tab on their many vids. <laughs> Maybe that's where he found Eric Roberts' many vids. And yeah, right. Eric right. Roberts is on many vids. So yeah, so but but checking there. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but they have this drunken conversation about how she was never good enough for her husband, and damn it, she wants him back for Christmas. And I, and I wrote my notes at that point. I'm like, Eli and a shovel can make you regret wishing for that lady. But uh, that's not where we're going at all. This is also where I wrote my notes. Wow, she's as bad at crying as she is at drunk. Oh, my God. Right. Like this. This is like children faking drunk who've never done it before. Yeah. My toddler has a new thing now where when he's done crying, he goes like, ah, ah, ah for two to four seconds afterwards. <laughs> He is better equipped to be in this movie <laughs> than Ken Del Vecchio's wife. <laughs> so, okay. Then we cut to the mushrooms kicking in. Right? So, this is, again, this is shit from the previous movie or maybe a scene that wasn't used in the previous movie and makes zero fucking sense in context. But the kid within his dream is going to call Martin Cove on the phone and have a conversation where no sentence is related to any other sentence or anything that's happened in this movie. Yeah, I, I here are my notes in order. Did I fall asleep? You know what? Fuck you, too, movie. If you guys can tell me what this scene means, I'll eat my own dick. <laughs> <laughs> 
did this actually happen in the universe of the movie? This phone call between Cobra Kai and Jesse, the kid? No, this is supposed to be part of his dream nightmare prophetic vision thing. So he has a prophetic vision of talking to a karate person he doesn't know. Yes. Okay, so John, <laughs> Martin Cove, the actor, is playing the dad of Aurora Palace. Yes. Who took over the theater. He used to own the theater. He is also in this universe a karate sensei? I don't know. We th This is a moment where we actually do have to go back and watch Joker's Poltergeist. Guys, guys, why don't we just stop the review right here and watch Joker's while we come back, huh? <laughs> a little quick 90-minute thing, come uh, back. Zero votes? <laughs> it's, it, no, it's only like 67 minutes long. It's, a, it's super short, yeah. But yeah, they, they, we just have this weird, random-ass conversation. Again, like we're watching people act out a random words generator, and then it's over. Yep. So we cut to mom going to work. Her work, by the way, has the same colored walls as her living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so weird. And again, she has that same framed headshot of Ken Del Vecchio that she carries with her. <laughs> yep. Same tree moving by in her window. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so they're about to do the big applesauce meeting. But just before she goes to the meeting, psychic lady shows up and explains that she had another vision. Okay. Did she, though? No. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to understand why I was confused? Right. Because she says that, but no. Well, and everything about this is so batshit insane. She says, look, I, I get it. That's great and everything. I'm at work right now and I have a, a meeting. And she's like, no, you have to come with me right now. No, she doesn't. This is a thing that could have waited until she was done working. Absolutely. She has a goddamn applesauce meeting right now. Are you serious? Right. This is that's the new jello. The applesauce bonus is riding on this. <laughs> exactly. So Abby explains that her visions can go fuck themselves. And she says, no, my vision was of your husband. And she's like, right. Why else would you be he here? This is also where she gets a name. Abby says, look, Elizabeth. And she says, oh, you called me Elizabeth. That means we're getting closer. And I'm like, well, no, no, it just means that I have a name to write in the notes instead <laughs> in of the psychic notes, lady. I, uh, now I can find and replace psychic lady in yeah, the notes. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, so but she's so she wanders off to do the apple. So it, like in this kind of like Ken Del Vecchio needed to win a bet about whether or not he could shoot a walk and talk type thing. OK, <laughs> this does result in one of the most baffling lines of the movie, though, does it? She presses the elevator button. It doesn't instantly open. And she says, where are those stairs when you need them? They're in between the floors. Same place <laughs> they are the rest of the, the time. <laughs> this implies that sometimes she pushes an elevator button and it opens up and there are stairs there. <laughs> so... But finally, like, psychic lady stops her in her tracks and she says, I saw my fiance die. That's why I quit my psychicking. And we're like, that's not relevant to the conversation in any way. It's, it's so good. She's doing her, like, big dramatic monologue. She's like, I saw my fiance die, so I gave him up. I broke up with him, even though it broke my heart to do it. And Kendall Vecchio's wife is like, did it work? Did he not die? And she's like. Oh, I have no idea. No, I, I never up checked up on this. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm a psychic. Literally the answer. And then the movie tries to go for an analogy at this point. Yep. She says, look, you've got to come with me. That's the entire plot. Applesauce has nothing to do with it. And she's like, oh, um, I'm not sure. She says, look, maybe I'm the three ghosts to your Scrooge. Okay. Yesterday, I was the ghost of Christmas past. Uh huh. Today I'm the ghost of Christmas present. I'm just writing down what the movie says. End of analogy. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Ken Del Vecchio was a judge. There's someone who is maybe in jail because of Ken Del Vecchio's thoughts and decisions. Well, and so I think I and honestly, I went about this. I, I came at this from nine different directions. I think the only way that analogy works is that yesterday was the past. 
And today hey, is now. <laughs> is the bread. Shit, no, it's the yep. past two. Oh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> I'm like an infinite number of ghosts, if you think about it. Can you tell me what I'm going to say next so I can be the ghost of Christmas present? <laughs> All right. Well, I feel like this movie just tripped over its analogy and we need to call somebody. So we're going to pause for another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will the karate belts they ordered on Amazon arrive in time? Where, oh, where has the fish gone? Who is the walrus? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the quintessentially batshit conclusion of A Karate Christmas Miracle. Hey, podcast listener. Well, you did it. You made it past Christmas, and you didn't forget to get anyone a gift. Did you? Oh, no, Uncle Murray. I forgot Uncle Murray. Oh, well, that's okay, Heath. Maybe you could just send him a card or something. Nah, Eli, Uncle Murray is super classy. I, I need a gift for a discerning taste. Can't just do a card. Mm, well, why not a wine from The Prisoner Wines? Uh, okay. Good thinking, I guess. Um, I'll stop up the toilet, and you get the grape juice. No, silly. Not prison wine. The Prisoner Wines. Like the TV show. Oh, what's... The prisoner wines. New Year first point. Count. Damn it all. Noah, start the sheet, please. Maybe you guys could just not do that this year. Absolutely. I not. would rather die. We are okay, doing this. Fine, fine. Make it a spreadsheet. All right. The prisoner wine company insists on doing things differently. Like twenty years ago, when they decided to combine some of California's best and most unusual grape varieties to make a bold and complex blend, aka their namesake wine, the Prisoner Red Blend. From the shape and weight of the bottle to the label featuring Francisco Goya's artwork, every detail is striking and memorable. Actually, now that you mention it, they sent me a bottle when they first became a sponsor, and it was delicious. Ooh, would you describe it as smooth and rich, yet approachable? Yet approachable, yeah, just like Uncle Murray. So, uh, yeah, I'm in. Where do I get some? Go to theprisonerwine.com slash awful for 20% off plus shipping included on your first purchase. This is the best deal they have available. Get 20% off plus shipping included at theprisonerwine.com slash awful. That's theprisonerwine.com slash awful. Offer valid on first-time online orders for U.S. residents of legal drinking age through 1231-2021. Other exclusions may apply. Please enjoy wines responsibly. All right. Good stuff. So you want to go make sure Noah's making the spreadsheet, right? That's, I absolutely do. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it fine. You shade the columns weird. You do. It just looks prettier. And now back to the useless psychic. So tell me, useless psychic, do you know where my husband is? Right. Yeah. Shit. Uh. Well, he could be here or there or maybe not. I, I honestly could use a drink. Will you drink with me? But, I mean... You called me. Right. So. Yeah, guys. guys. Uh, what's up, Noah? We're doing a it's, sketch. It's psych, though. The, the sketch. It's, it's just a show psych. Ah, damn it. It is psych. Yeah, sorry. I like psych. Yeah, it's fine. And we're back for more of this shit. For some reason, we could have left, but we didn't. Anyway, we're going to rejoin <laughs> Abby and Elizabeth. They're now at the college because there's only so many places he's allowed to film where Elizabeth had her psychic vision of Bob. And hey, let me spare everyone the time and effort that it took me to figure out what the fuck this scene is about. Ken Del Vecchio is just getting sadder and sadder in his attempts to brag, right? We went from soup kitchen to karate black belt. This whole, the point of this entire scene is, I don't know if you know this, but Ken Del Vecchio has his name on a gazebo at the Catholic College. Yes. Four minutes from where he lives. Yep. And he has a sweet leather jacket that we're going to show. Well, right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. She had a psychic vision of Bob at this gazebo. And then Abby looks and she sees the dedication on the gazebo is to Bob because he paid for it or something. At this point, you have to be like, Okay, have you ever met your husband? Right, like so. It, he, she didn't know he was a black belt. Didn't know he volunteered at the homeless shelter. Didn't know he taught women self defense. Didn't know he built a gazette. Like, what did she know? He was too busy giving her mind shattering orgasms. Must. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get around to the small talk. Must must be. And I have a theory about the end of this scene. I have a theory. Okay. I think this actress, the one who plays psychic lady Elizabeth, literally got cold. <laughs> 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 
because the end of this scene is just her being like, I'm fucking cold. Let's talk about the rest of this thing in the car. I'm cold. Yes. That's absolutely what happened. <laughs> no question. Right, because there's no goddamn reason in the world for the scene to move over to the car. Right. They just get in the car and they're like, what were we just talking about? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. Let's right. finish that conversation yeah. that we were having. We literally watch them do the don't pull the handle while I'm unlocking the car thing. Yep. Well, so I think that was supposed to be comic relief, but I'm honestly just guessing based on the musical cue. Oh, but yeah, so they get in the car and Elizabeth says, yeah, your husband definitely wanted you to see that he made a gazebo. Pretty sure that's the whole scene. Yeah. And then we get the Jack joke. Oh, God. It's, it's I feel like Ken Del Vecchio has never gotten a joke at any point in his life. He just yes. kind of when other people laugh. He starts <laughs> laughing. And so he's like, this is like the equivalent of sounding out a language phonetically. Yes. But with humor. He's sounding out jokes phonetically. That is is a perfect. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. The psychic is like, and don't call me Jack. Shirley. <laughs> what? Like, I think that's what they were trying to do. Yeah. She says, don't call me Jack. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. And I don't like fairy tales. They're creepy. Shirley. Temple. <laughs> Temple of Doom. Nailed it. Nailed it. What? <laughs> All right, so then we cut to little mini Del Vecchio showing off his sweet kicks. Oh, this is great because he's <laughs> he's like karate, karate, but then he's karateing his couch. And look, I think we can all say as once teenage boys, we have all karateed the fuck out of a couch in our day. <laughs> so, okay, first of all, I, I have to point out they are unable to put two consecutive kicks together without a cut during this karate practice thing. Don't you worry about that, Mario. I also couldn't do consecutive kicks <laughs> at your age. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's that. And then when, when we say karateing on a couch, like, so I, I don't want you to He's think of him. He's fucking the couch, right? right? exactly. He's <laughs> laying on the couch, kicking the back of it in a way that looks <laughs> like a dog trying to fuck your leg. Master Bate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. So, sometime later, so mom is painting the birdhouse now that her son made this. Full a, circle. I did. That was on the list, apparently, of things that had to be done by Christmas to bring dad back. Paint a birdhouse. But here's what's so amazing about the birdhouse. She's like, honey, I finished the birdhouse. He's not allowed to talk because of his psychic vision earlier. Mm -hmm. So, Mario Del Vicio's job in this scene was to act happy. That was the acting challenge. And he managed, got <laughs> punched in the face by a unicorn that just told me about the atomic table of elements. <laughs> I mean, that's a choice, right? I, I did not realize that's what he was. I didn't realize he was going for happy, to be honest with you. I, I thought slightly annoyed was what he was aiming for but but i mean if a unicorn punched you after showing you the the elements it would be right you'd be like a little bit annoyed but a little bit like oh oh okay. yeah no i think eli mixed, nailed mixed the feelings. description yeah because <laughs> attempt to smile is if you imagine that some kind of mythical beast emptied out his skin and then like imposter bugs filled his body and they were trying <laughs> to work the smile muscles for the first time that's how this smile goes like you know how a deer learns to walk he was learning to smile <laughs> yes exactly yeah and he's he's now on to red belt so apparently they're decorating their christmas tree with all the belts he passes through as he passes through them it looks so bad. It looks it's so, so dumb. Gray. It's so dumb. You could tell that Ken Del Vecchio was like, and then they'll be all on the tree. And it's just like, shit. <laughs> that looks That's, terrible. It looks really bad, but we've, we're committed to it now. So, okay. So Abby heads to work again. And this, she's going, the movie seems to realize only vaguely that there are consequences for just leaving your job right before the big applesauce meeting. Obviously. And she treats this like she's getting chewed out by her boss. She's treating it like she's just lost all her PlayStation privileges or something, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot of gall. I was busy with my psychic friend in, in the car, which needed a warm up. <laughs> there was an important gazebo reveal. I wasn't appreciating my husband's gazebo charity. <laughs> so. And this is this, uh, this is a great line from this scene where 
she's like, a, she, this scene is supposed to be her realizing again some more that life has passed her by because of her job. And she says, have you ever felt like you missed something? And I wanted him to be like, no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Not once. I don't do that emotion, no. No, but instead he's like, like what? And of course, what he really would have said was, you mean like the fucking applesauce meeting <laughs> you were supposed to be at yesterday? But yeah. And then she's like, yeah, well, you know, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm not like doing, I'm not like at top form at work, but you do know that my husband died in a mass shooting, right? And he's like, come on, that was last fucking year. Oh, are you still into that? <laughs> Everybody has to do some holiday shifts. Listen, it's, I don't care about this <laughs> husband. This is serious. We have applesauce things. I just love the idea that you're being chewed out by your boss for just leaving work in the middle of the goddamn day without telling anybody or anything like that and, or even acknowledging that you've done it. And your response is, you ever feel like jobs are stupid and this sucks? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, great resignation. Here we come. All right. So, okay. So we're back in the dojo for some more sweet karate action. Yeah. He's getting his black belt by wrestling a green belt. A br he's getting his brown belt. He won't get his black belt until the end, but yes. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Either way, feels like to get a brown or black belt, you would have to beat not a green belt, right? So he's fighting this same green belt for every single task, right? In fairness, they all mean sun. So I guess you beat the sun. <laughs> you yeah. beat the sunlight one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I thought about while this boring scene was happening? I bet that is Ken Del Vecchio's son's friend. And. How much must it suck to be that friend's parents who like that kid comes over to your house and Ken Del Vecchio is just like hanging out in your living room uh, talking about his movie festival. Uh, Are you wearing a black belt over your leather jacket <laughs> over your white judges robes? <laughs> is that Eric Roberts waiting in the back of your car? <laughs> so He's my driver today. I sentenced him to that. <laughs> no, actually, it's just a cardboard cutout I got from Cameo. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, then we cut from there. We cut to Elizabeth, the psychic law professor, telling another Christmas hypothetical. Now, they're filming this in the classic. It, it, well, it's sure going to be a funny reveal when you see who she's talking to manner. Nope. <laughs> no, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're thinking, <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be. Who do you think she's talking exponentially to? Exponentially more insane. Yeah, this is a good time for you to pause the podcast, do the sealed down, envelope. The, yep, do the craziest thing you can think of. <laughs> you lost because it's the Senegalese isolated tribe. It is the Sentinelese. The, it's the North North Sentinel, Sentinel Island. Island. Yes, yeah. that is the place where that asshole Catholic missionary John Cho got killed with arrows because he fucking deserved it. Right, because he tried to contact an uncontacted tribe that's protected by the Indian government because like, you know, breathing near them could be genocide. He was literally, he was about to kill all of them with like a common cold. Yep. And they killed him. They were justified just like Santa murdering the greaser with the bird <laughs> school <accident. laughs> But yeah, she's giving a legal lecture to the people of North Sentinel Island on her laptop. Mm -hmm. I again, I'm, I'm, I think he thinks he's doing humor. They have Skype. Yeah, right, right. Yes, exactly. But mom slams the laptop closed, and she's like, "No, we're doing my murder plot thing." Right. Yeah, she's like, "If I had to leave my applesauce meeting for you, you have to leave your Sentinelese." <laughs> A law lecture for me. Tie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she and she's like, I don't know. I don't think I want to go. But just then she has another sudden Eric Roberts vision. Yeah, he says, sometimes I think I'm going down the wrong path. And I wrote in my notes, Eric Roberts, I can assure you by being in this movie, you are going down the wrong path. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but she's getting a, like a series of visions from all the named characters at, at this moment. And I, I I struggle to write notes on it because it's all just random babble of like clips they still had. Right. Yep. My notes again in order are gibbering, gibbering. Bob is alive. This is the slowest 13 minutes of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, the last 10 or 12 minutes of this took me an hour and a half to watch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, so, okay. And part of this vision, by the way, includes 
Ken Del Vecchio visiting Aurora Palace, the, the girl who owned the theater that got shot up in the hospital after the shooting. So she thinks that means that Bob lived through the shooting, which I think we had already established, right? Every single vision has had the exact same revelation, which is your husband was alive and here is a nice compliment about Ken Del Vecchio. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he visited that nice young lady from the shooting. Yeah, right. He's ladling her soup. Are you poor? I don't know. <laughs> Starts to slice her up for the soup kitchen. What? She's a vegetable. So, oh God. <laughs> so... So she's like, yeah, but uh, all right, but we have to head to the bar because your psychic vision told you that we needed to go to the bar. And Elizabeth, the psychic, is like, why are you now telling me what my psychic vision took? This makes no fun. She's like, I know. I think he meant to write this line for you. I don't even know. <laughs> Hold on. This is just like Dickens. It's right. Still, right. Yes. Are we still dick the Christmas future <laughs> is at. The it's bar. now the future. I'm, oh, never mind. It's the present. Oh, damn it. It's the past. Now. I'm an alcoholic in real life and I'm cold earlier and now I have to drink now for real. <laughs> yeah, that that actually may have been it, too, that this lady was like, look, I'm not going to do this last scene unless you're buying the drinks. Yeah. So they go to this bar on Christmas Eve, which is lovely, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks like a nice place. It's one of those things where, like, it's very clearly like a nice, homey, family-owned establishment near Ken Del Vecchio's place. And he was like, how would you like your establishment to be featured not once, but twice in a real <laughs> International Film Festival award-winning movie? <laughs> Starring Eric Roberts and Martin Cove. I feel like the owner of this bar also committed a hate crime. <laughs> they they served a minor and they show up and he was like, I've got great news. <laughs> so, yeah, so they're hanging out in the bar on, on Christmas Eve when suddenly Elizabeth, this is so fucking weird. Elizabeth sees the fiance that she Broke it off with because the psychic vision told her he was going to die. Yep. At the bar. And, and and then she just yell cries at him. Yeah. She's like, oh, you were supposed to be dead. And he's like, nope, I'm alive. And she's like, well, maybe I'm not psychic. And I wanted her to turn to the other actress and be like, I'm sorry. What's the movie about at this point? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not psychic. I mean, I wanted someone to do that at every moment in the movie so I could write it down in my goddamn notes. I, that's what I was wondering. All right, why don't you just grab the bar tab? I'll be right back. I'll help pay in a second. I won't. I'm not leaving. Yeah. I'll give you my Zell. I'll give you my Zell. Don't worry. <laughs> so what I love about this, though, is the way that this what's actually happening to this character. If we just take a moment to try to exist in this movie's universe is he's just having a drink when his ex fiance shows up. And starts yelling at him for existing. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're supposed to be dead. Hey, at least if my exes show up and start yelling that at me, they'll have good reason. <laughs> <laughs> I like that this guy had like a wife here and the wife is like, oh, let me guess. You're the insane person who believes they're a psychic who broke up the engagement because you saw a vision of him dying. And you thought then the lack of engagement would mean he would live. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go enjoy Christmas with our Alex. family of real things. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. But just that, we hear Bob's voice coming only from the left headphone. <laughs> <laughs> Is it him? <laughs> no. No, it's just some other guy that sounded like him. And then, <gasps> then we have the like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a psychic after all. And she's like, oh, this is okay. You taught me the value of all the great things about Ken Del Vecchio. And, then, <laughs> and, and again, it's not my favorite part of the movie, but it's pretty close. We watch them make plans when they're both busy. Yes. This is so rough. We, this, is this is another great. eight minutes of the movie. It was like, so you want to come over for Christmas Eve dinner? And it was like, no, I have plans. No, I actually have family in town. Oh, um, uh, okay. Do you want to do the next day? What if we like a... text about next week? Uh... You want to text me? Well, so let's just let's just wait. Let's figure it out now. Get your get your calendar out. Get your cal do you have a <laughs> do you have do you have my number? Your... It's ready. App you use an write app. Write it down. <laughs> yeah, we watch all of that. They could have just not 
done any of that. Hold on, bartender, can I get a pen? I'm trying to write down a phone number. <laughs> yeah. We're going to text each other later about this. I watched the, I watched this on Tubi, and I got a Carvana commercial in between this scene and the next, and the Carvana commercial was so much better thought out than this entire fucking film. It would almost have to be. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Okay, so she says, all right, well, you can't come to Christmas Eve dinner. Why don't you come Christmas after? If you, I mean, if you're doing something on Christmas Eve, you must not be doing anything the afternoon of Christmas. And that's the day that Jesse is <laughs> testing for his black belt. At home. He's doing an at home. Well, right. Test. <laughs> From <laughs> whom is he getting a black belt on Christmas Day? What? From his mom. His mom is awarding it to him. So I wrote my notes like, Wait, did you guys forget that it was Christmas in your movie? Or are we going to have the karate instructor just showing up at their house on <laughs> Christmas Day exactly. to give him the, to administer the test? It's actually pretty lonely to be a karate instructor on Christmas. Because <laughs> 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 let's face it, if you have a family that you're spending Christmas with, you're not a karate instructor. Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude. True story. No, no karate instructor has been like, all right, everybody, I'm headed home to my wife and children. I'm a full grown man who teaches children the ancient art of <laughs> Can you also imagine? I'm a podcaster. <laughs> Honey, how was your day? Oh, it's pretty good. It's a kiss to King and Punch. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, the non karate instructing portion of our audience is loving this bit, I bet. <laughs> you know what? If you're insulted, we'll stand 30 feet apart and you can do all the karate. I'm going to go home to my family and name senators and books that I know. No, none of that's going to happen. If I hurt your feelings and you're a karate instructor, you can come over for Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> we both know you have nowhere to be. <laughs> oh god the fact that it's true makes it less funny though I think in this instance so <laughs> so okay so that day, the next day I guess it's we cut to Christmas without a, really a clue Abby and her parents are hanging out at the Christmas at the table for Christmas along with Elizabeth we have not met her parents by the way so it's just a couple of old folks I guess they're the grandparents and Jesse is doing, you know, cheaty ass pelvic thrust push ups again. Yeah. And the family's all arguing over who holds the board. Right. That he has to break to get his black belt. Yeah. They, they spend two fucking minutes arguing about, well, I'm the man. I should hold the board. No, I'm the old woman. I should hold the board. <laughs> this board needs a penis. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get a black belt for breaking. A very small piece. I did that when I was four at like a summer camp. It, it, yep. Yeah. That's a black belt? Yeah. Well, so, that's part of getting a black belt. But no, that is not. Well, you know, they, again, you can order one off of Amazon, right? It's not a real thing. It's just like how much money did your mom give to the babysitter who teaches kids the ancient art of kicky punch? First, you have to order two pieces of wood that match each other on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to send that back to Amazon. <laughs> But then they will send you a black belt. We used to have the kids. We used to do the tests like the black belts had to go do the tests for the really little kids. And we had a lesson on how to hold the boards. And the lesson was, you're going to break these boards by accident if you hold them with any amount of force. <laughs> <laughs> because they're special boards that you literally, you literally do like a little cut in them beforehand. Yeah. And he was like, if you so much as breathe on these fucking boards. They burst into flame. <laughs> these things explode. <laughs> <laughs> well and then I, I'm sorry I don't mean to call out this kid for being a pansy or whatever but he breaks it with his elbow he might as well drive yeah. a car over it <laughs> <laughs> I backed my father's Dodge Stratus over the board <laughs> I'm a black belt you could break this by sneezing on it <laughs> and he goes for the elbow alright fine <sighs> He just takes out a circular yeah. saw. Boom, there we go. <laughs> Black belt. And then Ken Del Vecchio walks in. Yep. He breaks the board with his elbow. The dead 
husband just walks in the back door, says, and I quote, I did it. I escaped. End of movie. End of movie. I wrote the end. Fuck you. I think we should stop making this podcast. We all wrote <laughs> the end. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, Every yeah. one of us we independently <laughs> wrote that yeah. in the notes. <laughs> I noticed that this morning and I'm like, nothing can better encapsulate this film than all of our reactions to the ending of it just being, oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh, and also, so he comes in and he says, well, I, I escaped. Then he turns to the kid and he says, this is your black belt. You earned this for me, didn't you? How would he know that? Why <laughs> would so he know that? stupid. And then mom says, it's a miracle, just like in the title. And we all go, wait, is it? <laughs> and then the credits. Oh, it's A. So <laughs> good job, guys. All right, so to close things up, I am dying to hear the fan theories. Where was Bob? Who kidnapped Bob? New Jersey Bosnick. <laughs> this is a prank by Eli. He actually kidnapped Ken Del Vecchio. <laughs> I could kidnap Ken Del Vecchio with a box and a stick and a thread. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of gravy. <laughs> All right. And well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of a karate Christmas miracle, but it's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to recommit to this program. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching Vindication Episode 2. This time, maybe something will happen. Yeah, but probably not. So <laughs> with that to look forward to, we're going to bring Episode 332 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scanning A, The Citation, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Red, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Aviva Jeffs on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Hayden and Eli Bostick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard or earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. That same kid, Mario Del Vecchio, starred in a wrestling Christmas miracle a year later that is on the docket for us. So much Vecchio verse on the docket. Man. So much Vecchio. Ken Del Vecchio went on to get disbarred over something that involved peanut butter and feral goats. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> the website for Hoboken International Film Festival is broken. Aww. It is. When I went to their Facebook, <laughs> it's I just a dead link. It. It's, it's nothing. A dead Chrome it's just shrugs its shoulders oh. and does that little spiral by the ear gesture. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, here's the description of a wrestling Christmas miracle. Oh, please. It was the opening night movie at the Hoboken International Film Festival, or <laughs> HIF, in 2020. <laughs> it starred, of course, Mario Del Vecchio. Uh, he is also a nationally ranked youth wrestler. No! He got, he got second in nationals. No, in Mario, no! <laughs> Mario, no! <laughs> And also in that cast, Martin Cove, Cobra Kai guy, Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, wow. Oh, Jimmy Walker. Too. Okay. Michael Winslow from Police Academy in Spaceballs. What? Okay, sure. Todd Bridges. Willis from Different Strokes is who that is. Okay. <laughs> and Julie McCullough from Growing Pains and Sharknado fame. She was Jesus, the there must have been too. some kind of crazy semi-celebrity massacre thing that happened in Jersey in the in between these two films or something. It's just a hate crime convention that got busted Again, by a those, sting. Those yeah. all sound really DUI to me. Right? <laughs> yeah, basically, if you say, do you know who I am in the state of New Jersey, you go before Ken Del Vecchio. You, you, Ken Del Vecchio goes, no, but I know a man who does. <laughs> <laughs> Is Robert <sighs> Loja still alive? No. Okay, that's why he's not in that cast. Yeah. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.